In this video, let's discuss the discrete cosine transform, or DCT, and in order to understand how it works, let's first start with transform coding. The idea of transform coding is to encode data by transforming it from one domain to another, for example, from pixel domain to the frequency domain, and this principle is based on information theory, which postulates that coding vectors is more efficient than coding scalars. More specifically, by grouping blocks of consecutive samples into vectors, inherent correlations among neighboring samples can be better exploited. So for example, if you have a vector x consisting of k values, and if you apply a linear transform t to it in order to produce y, then the transform reduces correlations among the components of x. And this decorrelation allows the encoding process to represent data more compactly or more efficiently. While the transform does not directly ensure that the components of Y are similar, it reorganizes the data into a form that highlights the most significant components for efficient encoding. Now, if the majority of information in vector Y is concentrated in its first few components, the remaining components can be coarsely quantized or even set to zero with a minimal distortion. And this transform itself does not really compress the data, but the compression occurs through the quantization process. And this fact is heavily utilized by JPEG with the DCT, but also by other transform coding methods, such as the kahunen Luebu transform, KLT, or the fast Fourier transform, FFT. With such transform coding, the spatial frequency refers to the frequency with which pixel values change across the image block. For instance, in area with many intensity changes, as we have here in the second row of this example, the spatial frequency is high, while smoother regions exhibit lower spatial frequency, as we can see here for the first row. It is also important to understand that the human eye is less sensitive to higher spatial frequencies in images in comparison to lower, and the reason for this is that lower frequencies belong to the larger structures, while higher frequencies belong to changes in small regions. And this characteristic allows compression algorithms to focus on perceptually significant data while discarding redundant details. On slide 17, we can see how the DCT formalizes the idea of spatial frequency. It measures image content changes based on cosine wave cycles per block. And the result of the cosine is used as a factor for sampling the actual pixel value. And this explains why higher frequencies here 3x, for example, sample close by pixel differences with positive and negative factors, and lower frequencies, here 0x, for example, sample differences between larger regions in the block. In other words, lower frequencies carry the basic structure of larger regions, while higher frequencies carry the details of smaller regions, which are not so important for a human visual system and can't be distorted or even discarded. The DCT performs two key operations, namely energy compaction and decorrelation. It is nearly lossless, aside from minor rounding errors, and converts spatial pixel data into frequency components or coefficients. And yeah, as we have seen, this representation enables better compression because we can quantize higher components. On the next slide, we can finally see a mathematical formulation of the DCT. Based on an input function f, the actual pixel values at position ij will be sampled and the DCT produces a new function upper f, which represents the resulting frequency components at position u and v. The transformation process involves summing up the cosine weighted pixel values over an n times n block. The factor in the beginning of this formula differs for the very first coefficient and all other remaining coefficients because the sum at this position 0, 0 is typically very large due to the fact that the cosines will be 1 if u and v are 0. The next slide shows how this formula is used with JPEG which employs a block size of 8 times 8 to convert pixel data into frequency components. The inverse DCT reconstructs the data by reversing the entire process, meaning that the frequency coefficients will be converted back 
to pixel values. And as you can see here, the formula is pretty similar, but the scaling is performed for every frequency coefficient before we actually compute the sum. The principle of 2D DCT can be simplified for one dimensional signals, making it easier to understand and apply. So here we see how such a 1D forward and inverse DCT would look like for a sequence of eight values. The DCT decomposes signals into two different types of frequency components, namely 1D C coefficient at position 00, zero and all other remaining AC coefficients. And the analogy here is taken from electricity where DC means direct current and AC means alternating current, expressing the fact that the DC coefficient contains direct information from all pixel values in the block. Now over the next few slides we can see the DCT basis functions for the different coefficients of this 1D example, showing us again the factors that are used for the different input values in order to compute a specific coefficient. We can also easily see here that the DC coefficient uses 1 as a factor for every value, while the first AC coefficient uses decreasing positive factors for the first four values and symmetric increasing negative factors for the next four values, and this results in a difference between the first group of four values and the second group of four values. So if the second group would be symmetric or a mirror of the first one, the resulting sum would be effectively zero. If you consider the last coefficient with u equals seven, you can see that it basically samples differences of consecutive values. For the 2D DCT, the structure of the basis function is basically the same, but in addition to the horizontal dimension, we also have a vertical one. Now, what is really important to understand is the fact that for pixel blocks with similar values in small regions, and in particular for larger homogeneous areas, a lot of higher AC coefficients at the bottom right will be zero, and this enables strong compression as we will see with JPEG. And that's it already for this video. Thanks very much for watching.